Berkshire Hathaway must be, hands down, one of the most influential corporations in America and beyond. We're going to check in on Warren Buffett and crew and find out their secrets to success. And if they're a good investment, buckle your seatbelts, folks. This is going to be a good one. Berkshire Hathaway began all the way back in 1839 as a textile manufacturing company. However, the Berkshire Hathaway we think of today really did not begin until a man named Warren Buffett entered the picture back in the 1960s. At that time, Berkshire Hathaway was struggling and their shares were listed at $7.50 while their book value was coming in around $19. Warren Buffett, of course, recognized that deal and he bought in. And then later he offered to sell it back to the current management for $11.50. They liked that idea, but they were only willing to pay him $11.37. And this kind of rubbed Warren the wrong way. So instead he decided, well, I'm just going to take control of the company. So he bought 49% of the shares. In 1967, they bought an insurance company called National Indemnity. And it is to this day, Berkshire's oldest operating subsidiary. In addition to buying companies, they do like to invest as well. And some of their larger stakes include Coca-Cola and Apple at its core. Berkshire's investment philosophy, shaped by Buffett himself, values the long term over the short term. It focuses on buying companies that have a moat, that is, a long term competitive advantage, and are managed by some pretty capable people. This has proven to be a very profitable approach to investing. Berkshire Hathaway has made a lot of money following this philosophy. Join the conversation. Let us know in the comments if you follow the investment activities of Berkshire Hathaway. Your participation is, of course, well appreciated. Don't forget to like and subscribe to stay up to date on future content and to thank you for that click. Today, Berkshire Hathaway stands as one of the largest public companies in the world, a testament to Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger's strategy and leadership. But with Buffett and Munger advanced in age, the question on everyone's mind seems to be, what does the future hold for Berkshire Hathaway? Even as Buffett and Munger continue to play a role, they've also initiated a transition plan. Part of this plan involves diversifying their portfolio further into sectors like, well, technology, as seen, of course, by their investments in Apple and Amazon. This strategy appears to be steering Berkshire towards a future that keeps pace with modern tech-driven changes, all while staying true to its core investment principles. If the company stays on the course set up by Buffett and Munger, well, I have a feeling their future is going to look very bright indeed. When we, of course, ask if they are a good investment. We do know they have a proven track record, a diverse portfolio, and superb management. This all sounds, well, fantastic. However, we're still going to dive into some numbers. And for that, we will call on our good old friend, Mr. Math. We are going to start in just a moment with that surface data, but I will say we're going to use the data for BRK.A. There is also a BRK.B, and we'll explain a little bit about the difference of those when we get a little bit deeper into the statistics. But for now, let's start with that market cap. That comes in at $760.54 billion, and they have a beta of 0.88. That means that they are a little bit less volatile than the market average. Their earnings per share come in at 5,143.42. <laughs> That's pretty darn high. Uh, they have a price to earnings ratio of 102.0. Now, their industry average is at 12. I thought about comparing these guys to some other companies, but it's really hard to do that. Berkshire Hathaway is its own beast. And even with that, I'm not concerned about that 102 because of what they do. They do buy companies, they're always expanding, and they're always investing. That will inflate a price to earnings ratio, no doubt. Their price to book ratio, a little more reasonable, 1.50. The industry average is at 1.40. So they're not that far above things. Their return on equity, it comes in at 1.43%. I always like to see that a lot higher than that. But once again, this is Berkshire Hathaway. They're kind of that company that the statistics don't mean that much. And we'll talk a little bit about that a little bit later. When we switch over to their cash, their revenue, well, that comes in at $316.64 billion and their earnings come in at $7.10 billion. Now I do not have any kind of projected increase in their earnings over the next couple of years. So I don't have that data, but we do have their free cash flow and that comes in at a nice looking $23 billion and their operating cash flow, it comes in at $39.09 billion. So they've got a lot of cash on hand. That is a good thing. We're going to take a look at their fair value. Now these are some pretty high numbers. So their current value right now is $524,750 per share. Using a discounted cash flow model, we do get a fair value of $352,640. 
$40, that actually makes them overvalued by 48.8%. Normally, I'd be a little concerned about that, but once again, Berkshire Hathaway, it's like they've got a get out of everything card. All right, let's take a look at some of the returns, because that I think is going to be very important when it comes to dividends. We got no dividends. When we look at the three year, their price rose from $295,000 to $522,089.39. That, my friends, is a return on investment of 76.98%, which is really good. There, of course, is that BRKB. Of course, if you're looking at that cheaper version, the BRK.B, their return on investment on the three year was 74.23%. So they're really, really close. Let's switch over to the one year. On the one year, their price rose from $434,424.26 to $522,089.39. That is a return on investment of 20.18%. Similarly, if we do look at the BRK.B, their return on investment on the one year comes in at 19.31%. So just a little shy of the big A stock. In 2023, they rose from 472950 to $522,089.39. This is a return on investment of 10.85%. That is not too shabby. BRK.B came in just a little bit above that. But once again, it's still negligible. BRK.B came in at 10.97%. So really, really, really close. Now, whether you are investing in BRK.A or BRK.B, you're pretty much going to get a consistent return. And that's what we're seeing in these numbers. Let's take a look, though, at their debt. When it comes to debt, they have a total debt of $123.62 billion, and their total equity, that comes in at $516.26 billion. That gives us a debt-to-equity ratio of 23.9%. That's not too shabby. In fact, this ratio has been decreasing as it was 28.2% just five years ago. So they are moving in the right direction. When it comes to their cash and equivalents, they have $130.62 billion to work with there. Let's take a look at their short term. Their assets come in at $209.66 billion, and their short term liabilities comes in at $142.25 billion. Not too bad. When we switch to the long term, their assets come in at $787.41 billion, and their liabilities come in at $338.56 billion. And once again, that's not too bad. When we look at their debt, they do have more total cash than their debt, and that is absolutely great. They have undeniably deep pockets. And there is really no concerns with this company in terms of debt. Okay, so what is the final verdict? It is a no-brainer when it comes to Berkshire Hathaway. This is a company that is a consistent growth stock, and it, by that nature and by the very deep pockets, is as blue chip as they come. They do have, of course, their two offerings with their A and B shares, and the difference between them is negligible. The real difference is that the B share is, well, more reasonably priced. For passive investors, Berkshire will most likely be a hard pass. However, there are are ETFs that do provide some dividends, such as, well, BRKY, which offers a 5.4% yield on their covered call strategies that use Berkshire Hathaway. For longer term investors who are looking for solid blue chip growth stocks, then this is one definitely worth some due diligence. Whether or not they fit into your investment profile, this is still a company to pay attention to. If they were to sell off a sizable chunk of shares in Apple, for example, I'm going to pay attention and see if there are some problems at Apple that I may need to be aware of. Also, also, Warren Buffett is a fountain of wisdom, and just investing with your ears or eyes can benefit your journey towards your financial goals. And the kitten decided that, well, she wants to be part of this today, so we're gonna we're gonna roll with it. Keep the learning going. Watch my video on Royal Bank linked on the left, or test YouTube's recommendation skills by checking out the video on the right. Your choice will decide the winner, and I will see you in the next video.